Thanks for staying with us on The Real Story. There are reports that Russia has built up more than 100,000 troops along the border of Ukraine, which is sending alarm bells that a Russian invasion could be imminent. The U.S. has told Russia it will uphold and defend Ukraine's sovereignty. Reports also saying the U.S. has stepped up military assistance to Ukraine. But President Biden's office is trying for diplomacy, talking with Russia, offering the country diplomacy or consequences for aggression. The U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken saying that they've created, quote, severe economic sanctions and that the choice on which path to take is with Russia. So a lot to break down with international foreign relations expert Yvonne Davis. Yvonne spent time in the region. She worked in Kiev, Ukraine at the U.S. Embassy for the Department of State under President George W. Bush, training embassy personnel. We really appreciate you coming back on The Real Story. Yvonne, good to see you. Good to see you, too. All right, so your analysis on what's going on in the region right now. Well, Vladimir Putin is looking to flex his muscle. Uh, he wants to position himself. He wants to test the new administration because he sees it as weak. And he feels that the, the climate is right for him to make the move on Ukraine, to return and restore what he says Ukraine actually belongs to Russia. You know, it's interesting because <laughs> President Biden and President Putin, they have a history. I mean, you know, just for the fact that um, President Biden was on the Foreign Relations Committee, uh, wasn't he co-chair of the Foreign Relations Committee? He had the gone chair. out, mm -hmm. he was the chair, yep, and he had gone out. I mean, he had met with Putin before in his autobiography or his biographical book. I can't remember which one I read. I remember him discussing Putin and looking him in the eye and everything like that. So discuss what you think. I mean, it's an interesting history between the two. It's an interesting, I wouldn't call it a relationship, but there's some background there. Well, I think that 20, that we're, Vladimir Putin is in his 10th year as the head of Russia in power. And so the history of uh, President Biden, Vice President Biden, Senator Biden goes back a long ways. He's, he, he's very well, uh, has, a, has a knowledge base of this leader, uh, what, has, what in, uh, inspires this leader. And so in terms of trust, there's never been a trust on the part of our president as it relates to Russia. And so looking him in the eye, that was the same thing that President George W. Bush said. And he looked him in the eye and he saw a good soul. But we see that that was a... So now it's a situation as we forward uh, the clock to 2022. This is the most significant foreign policy issue for the current administration right now. And so it is a chessboard game in terms of uh, a battle of, of wit and diplomacy at this point. How do you think President Biden's administration is doing so far? What, what is he doing well? What is he not doing that you think needs to be done? I think that at this point, initially, I believe the administration was pretty weak on its initial responses. But I think of late with the, the recent uh, 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 option to actually sanction the president himself, Vladimir Putin himself, was a very strong move. Uh, the United States is the key player as it relates to NATO. And so encouraging NATO and its the alliances, even countries that are not involved in NATO, to take a position is, I would give the United States a lot of credit for that. However, there's a, there's a strategic positioning in the geopolitical space that, that needs to be considered. And it's a country called Azerbaijan. As you know, a year ago, Azerbaijan was in a war um, with Armenia. And so they have built up a very strong arsenal and the way they're situated is they're, be, they're on the borders of Iran and Russia. And so I think that in terms of diplomacy, there's an opportunity for Azerbaijan to engage in the process. They have definitely positioned itself as a, as a sovereign, self-serving nation that could actually be a benefit uh, uh, to curtail Russia in our efforts. And when you look at Azerbaijan, they also have oil. I worked in Baku. I worked in Azerbaijan. They have oil. So that could actually thwart some of the 
the needs of Europe dependent, heavily dependent on Russia's oil and gas. And so I think that that needs to be looked at. That public diplomacy piece needs to be looked at. If I were the Biden administration, I would be sending people to Azerbaijan to be a part of that collective strategy in support of Ukraine. You were in Ukraine in 2005, I think you told me, um, and yes. you also spent time in Russia in as Russia well too. in that same year. So what yes. was the sentiment then? What were you seeing from people in Ukraine? Well, in Ukraine, there was a, inside the embassy, there's a, there's a great hope in terms of democracy and freedom because many of the the people that worked inside the embassy or they were children of those that were a part of the Soviet Union, they did not want to see a return to it. And out of all of the participants that I actually worked and taught professionally in the professional leadership, there was at least one or two persons that actually had a sentiment towards Russia. So there is a part of this country that has a sentiment towards Russia. And so that's why the invasion of Crimea and the different things that happened in South Ossetia and Donbass, uh, there is a split there. But, but uh, Putin has his eye on Kiev. And so the, 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 the Ukrainian people are very concerned about this. You get a split. You get some who say, go about their day acting like nothing's happening, and others are very worried. And, and it's right there. So it, we're, we're, we're nearing something quite serious. And so that's why diplomacy is really critical at this point. You um, obviously have a history with Russia, too, right? You uh, had worked there in 2005. You've yes, been watching the country for a very long time. You're watching the moves right now. What do you think? Is Russia going to invade? Like, what, what, what are you seeing from the signals? I think that there is, uh, you know, President Biden walked, had his uh, press secretary walk back the, the comments. But I believe there's a potential for a small incursion. But I believe the dilemma that Putin has right now is that next week is the Winter Olympics of Beijing. I don't think that an invasion of Ukraine would be very smart on the part of Vladimir Putin when his ally Xi Jinping doesn't wants to have a big showing for the opening ceremonies. So you have a situation where once the Olymp Winter Olympic game starts, it's going to go for at least three weeks. So if he's going to invade, he has to invade now, before February 4th, or he might have to wait. The other piece of information is that there's an economy, there's an economic issues that are going on in Russia right now. The Russian people don't want this. And there's, there's, there's a lot of problems with the economy. The sustainability of Vladimir Putin being uh, ramping up troops for as high as 175,000 is not sustainable. He knows the economic challenges that he has right now. So if he were to strike, he probably should have struck last week. But he also knows, uh, in a very astute way, the United States has supported him, threatening to have sanctions against him and more economic sanctions. And that's the last thing he wants to do. The letter, the response that the U.S. gave to Russia, no, we're not going to adhere to any of your requests. Uh, it's not off the table about Ukraine coming into NATO, and then the NATO alliances have come together as one. There's one sticking point, Germany. Germany has been kind of weak in the context uh, to the frustration of some NATO members and other European allies in terms of blocking uh, military artillery going to Ukraine, wanting just to send some support, some technical support, and Germany's in a in a in a very precarious position right now. Interesting, that is. Um, what consequences could the U.S. face if we end up sanctioning Russia? Is there anything that you see on the horizon that we that could impact us? I think that the the, the big thing that Russia did to Ukraine was the cyber attacks. I could see them taking making cyber attacks on our financial systems. They've done it before. Uh, I just saw today that there was uh, cyber attacks and actually in Belarus to to disrupt uh, Russian troops from because they're doing military exercises there now to disrupt and discard Russian troops out of Belarus. So that is a, a card that definitely that Putin would pull. 
and is capable of doing it, and Russia's known for that. The other thing is that people aren't paying attention to is what's happening in Cuba and in Venezuela. Uh, I actually follow Vladimir Putin on Twitter, just kind of see what he's doing. And he's having, he's had meetings with presidents of both countries, shoring up their diplomacy. But I'm sure there's been a discussion about what's happening. So if anything could be disrupted or distracted in the Western Hemisphere, which is in our backyard, Cuban Missile Crisis 2.0, we'll see. But we need to pay attention to that. So it's not just what's happening in Ukraine. You have to look at what's happening around in the Western Hemisphere and Cuba, the opportunity for change and more support out of Azerbaijan, or even talking to Turkey to see what Turkey could do to be supportive, because Turkey, after the U.S., has the largest amount of troops or the, it, troops uh, involved in, in NATO. Vaughn, a lot to watch and a lot will unfold in the coming weeks. We always appreciate your expertise, Avon Thank Davis. You so much. Thanks for coming on The Real Story again. Thank you so much. All right, that does it for us on The Real Story. If you want to watch these segments again, head to fox61.com or download the Fox 61 app and watch The Real Story every Sunday at 10 a.m. right here on Fox 61. Have a great morning.